Hey, I am here in the Immersion Zone with my three special guests here today who uh, can introduce themselves here. So I'm just going to pass the microphone around to you guys. I'm Kevin Farley. I'm on the SQL team, uh, currently working on a number of different things, Comstore primarily. And I'm Aaron Gerdman, work at FIS uh, in product development, uh, especially on a market data application using SQL Server. And hi, I'm Sunil Agarwal. I'm a program manager uh, with SQL team. And I'm in SQL's Tiger team. And uh, Column Store is one of the technologies I work very closely with. Yeah. Thank you, guys. I'm very happy that you could take your time here to uh, come and chat with me. So SQL Server 2017 was just launched. Um, and I'm kind of wondering what your highlights are from your perspective. It's been uh, something you've been working on for a little while. So Kevin? So one of the interesting things in SQL 2017 is the resumable index builds, where you can pause an index build in mid-flight, or if something interrupts it, you can pick it up rather than having to start all over again. Obviously, the big dog in the room is the Linux port, which was a huge piece of work. Um, what else, Sunil? Yeah, so the Linux was uh, the main focus. But uh, my favorite one is the adaptive query processing, because uh, when you run a query, uh, sometimes SQL optimizer may not choose the right query plan. And with the adaptive query plan, what happens is we have a feedback loop. So the next time when you run the query, it will run faster. And I feel this will help tremendously to a lot of our customers. I'm really excited about that. It's a small thing, but it's a big deal. Yeah. So there's another corner to that one, the interleaved execution, where we'll get partway through a complex query, look at the result set, and then re-optimize the rest of the query. So if we do a join that we expect a thousand rows out of and we get 10 million, we know that the estimates are off, so we'll redo the optimization for the rest of the query above that and then do it right in line in the first execution. It's very cool, a lot of exciting things coming up. So um, you're doing a session today. I heard, Kevin, that you had some last minute changes, so you're doing a, a different session. So I'm gonna pass this over to Sunil. You're doing a session today on column store indexes for um, uh, data warehousing traditional. Can you tell us a little bit about your session and what you're going to talk about today? So the column store has been uh, one of the most uh, successful uh, technology from SQL Server uh, 16 perspective. We see a lot of adoption uh, with our technology. And we actually use the column store technology to give real-time analytics. That means you're running your transactional workload and you can still do analytics with minimal impact on the transactional workload. So in this context, I actually had a very good fortune to work with Aaron and his team. And, uh, and we looked at their business challenge and, and explored how our technology can solve their problem. And uh, Aaron can talk more about that, but I think uh, it was a very successful uh, deployment for us. So that was that. And other thing that we will talk about, the column store, everybody knows, gives you very, very good performance, but we have seen, based on our customer interaction, that not everybody is using the column store in the best possible way. So one of the things I want to focus is what are the common gotchas that you have with column store performance and how do you find it and how do you fix it? So that's the focus of the session, along with what Aaron is going to talk about. Yeah. And we can pass it over to you, Aaron. So you're not with Microsoft, so but you have been working with Microsoft. Can you uh, share a little bit about how that process has been like and uh, kind of what performance improvements you've seen by implementing some, some of these things? Yeah, sure. Uh, gladly. It's it's really been a pleasure working with Sunil and his team uh, on uh, you know, everything from when they first uh, introduced some of the uh, 2016 uh, new technologies, you know, just giving us a, a sneak preview of, of what's coming uh, so that we can, those, those gears can start to turn in our minds as, uh, as uh, application architects, developers, CTOs in our, in our group we can start to think how better we can take advantage of SQL Server because we have a big investment in it. And, um, and so when, uh, in particular, I heard about the uh, real-time operational analytics uh, that are capable of uh, possible with the uh, enhancements in Column Store index technology, that really got my attention. So then, uh, because I work on so much data and um, in particular, uh, some real-time streaming data. So uh, it was, you know, at, at first I thought like, Oh yeah, I'll get another, um, you know, uh, uh, a case study or a document to go read somewhere. But no, I got I got to meet this guy. We're on the phone like every couple of days, 
uh, you know, he's, he's bringing in people from his team to really help and really, um, like he said, understand the business challenge, understand the technical um, uh, situation. And um, at the end of it, it was a great outcome because uh, this, the technology, uh, the Comstar technology is really helping us. Um, and uh, it, it works, uh, it works actually, you know, right exactly as advertised. And I kind of like to say it lets us have our cake and eat it too, because the um, you know we can we can continue to use the exact same operational transactional processing that we've been using for years, and then on top of it apply um, a comps for index, and all of a sudden our uh, real time dashboard that which is our new enhancement that we're uh, struggling how to how to actually implement this without creating burdens on the back end. All of a sudden, that dashboard can work very quickly, very effectively, and uh, so then we get to you know keep the transactional processing cake, but then eat it and enjoy the, the analytics um, uh, on the other end. So it, yeah, it's been great working with um, um, uh, Sunil, his team, and just you know glad to be Microsoft partners in that in that way. Thank you. It's, uh, it sounds like magic when you just implement column store indexes and everything runs faster. <laughs> Yes. So, uh, so Neil, can you tell us a little bit about the, the SQL Server product team? It's called the Tiger team. Uh, what are you currently working on? I, I know you probably can't share all of that, but some of the, the amazing things that you do. Okay. So SQL Tiger team is a, a sub-team of SQL product team. Product team is huge, right, as you can imagine. So the, the charter of SQL Tiger team is to work with the releases that are already in the market. So, for example, there are customers who are using SQL 16, 14, 12, and I would say even 2008 R2. So, our goal in the Tiger team is to understand what challenges those customers are having on those releases and learn from those challenges, sometimes help those customers to overcome those things, and in some cases, bring those learnings in-house to improve the existing release through service packs and CUs. So what we are finding is that a lot of customers who really cannot upgrade to a higher version of SQL Server because maybe ISV has certified the application on a lower release, so now they're able to get the advantage. So that's the, 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 the goal of Tiger Team. It's all about customers, how to make our customers successful, bring those learnings in-house, and, and improve the product, existing as well as upcoming product, to deliver much, much better value. So that's the goal of Tiger Team. So you get to work with all the happy customers then, everyone who's uh, thankful for, you know, yes, we finally get this feature in, in our version of SQL Server. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll say this. I mean, uh, we cannot solve all the problems, all the problems. Aaron, uh, I, mean, I mean, I've been fortunate to work with Aaron to get that kind of success. And that's our goal that we want to understand and solve customer problems. Some of those problems are complex. I mean, these are complex workloads running industry strength uh, production. And uh, the hope is that we can uh, help them uh, solve the problem in some way and also learn from it and, and hopefully solve it in a much complete way going forward. Thank you. And Kevin, is uh, would you say that high availability is kind of your specialty? That's one of my specialties. Um, I've worked on the always-on feature set through the 2016 release cycle, um, since moved on to other feature sets. But it's been uh, quite a, an interesting project to see how we can get that to be more flexible and work better with more customers. Um, the always-on availability set is where you can have one primary and a number of secondaries. You can offload the read workload to the secondaries. With 2016, we brought in the distributed availability groups where you can have a joining two different availability groups so you don't have a, a common cluster. We had one customer that had primary data center in New York and a secondary in Oregon. And anytime there was a network hiccup, the cluster quorum caused problems. So now they can have two separate clusters within one distributed availability group and still have the replication, all that, and not worry about quorum issues going back and forth. So that was a, a nice change there. And then, uh, let's uh, try and wrap this up. So uh, what I want to ask you about, so uh, Aaron, is this your first time at Microsoft Ignite? 
Yes, it is. Okay. Can you uh, share a little bit about how your experience has been here this week? And is there anything that you're looking forward to uh, in the next couple of days? Uh, yeah, well, uh, it's, it is my first Ignite. Um, it is, it's pretty amazing. Um, I was just telling the guys about the, I'm, I'm particularly amazed about like the breadth of, of opportunities to uh, listen to presentations from, you know, from the real experts who really know this uh, technology. Um, I love going up after the presentation, ask that one or two question. You know, there's a line of people because everyone's got their own little angle, right? Um, and, uh, you know, and it's, you know, everything from, I mean, well, the whole Microsoft stack. So it's really, it's really great. Uh, it's also kind of fun. We're, we're an Office 365 organization. We're on Yammer. Um, I can pull out my Yammer. I can post online. And I can even see people back at the office who aren't as lucky to, to be here today saying, oh, I, I read this news, like, uh, you know, about some new technology, some new, um, some new announcement from Microsoft. I say, okay, I'll go over to that booth. And I'll ask them that question, and I'll get the answer, and I just yammer it back. So um, it's it's really great to be here to kind of just quickly get um, the, the 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 full picture, the the strategic outlook, and then communicate that back to fifty thousand plus people who might be watching on Yammer. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, I'm very thankful that you could uh, carve out some time. I know you're all busy. You have to run to your sessions and get prepared for that. Uh, so thank you guys, and I hope you have a wonderful night.